Alright, good afternoon Ken. So this afternoon we're going to do the valve clearances on the engine. So we'll start just having a quick introduction to it. There is two valves per cylinder. There is an inlet valve and an exhaust valve for each cylinder. So that's cylinder number one and they're numbered one through to six all the way to the back. Um, the firing order is like one, five, three, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember the exact one. It's very simple though and it's in the book. So it, so we're going to do the valve clearances uh, one by one, cylinder at a time. And the way that we know we've got the rockers in the right position is to refer to the manual over here. It says, with the valves rocking on the number six cylinder, set the clearances on number one. And it goes down for all six cylinders, like down here, with the valves rocking on cylinder number five, set the clearances on cylinder number two. So if we follow these instructions, we'll get to the bottom and we've done all the cylinders. And the distance between the rocker arm and the little tappet here is on the inlet, 0.3 of a millimeter, and exhaust is 0.4, or the inch equivalent there, which you'll see on the fuel gauges. So this is done at room temperature, like if you've run it, do it, do it the next morning. Some engines, industrial engines, warm, cold, doesn't matter, but, um, I always do it cold, and in this manual it says cold. So anyway, we'll get cracking. We'll, um, so just start with the first one there, with the valves rocking on number six cylinder, set the clearances for number one. So the six cylinder is this one up the back. And what it means by rocking is that when this exhaust rocker is coming up, so this exhaust valve will be in a closed position, there's a little tiny overlap as the inlet opens at the same time. So as this reaches its highest point, this one will start going down. That is called rocking. So when number six is rocking, number one cylinder, both of these should be able to be moved slightly because that's in the top dead center position or both valves are closed, depending on what stroke it's on. And then we can do our adjustment. So on the front of the crank here, I've got a 45 mil socket. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to crank it. And you just go nice and slow. You don't want to go crazy. You want to let those valves, let the air escape out of the cylinders without working too hard. You don't want to um, actually loosen that nut off when you're going backwards and forwards if you do. So anyway, we are watching the valve rocket back there on number six. So you, you, soon you should be able to see that furthest one, the exhaust one, rise to its highest position. So that's coming up. And just as it gets up here, we should be able to see that inlet one, the one just before it, start to dip. And just there, did you see that? Just went like a millimeter. I'll just do it again and then go backwards. So see that one there just go down? That second from the end, that's the inlet starting to drop. So just pick that one back up a little. So that's, that's perfect. That's in the rocking position. So now, if we go up to our first cylinder, these two should be in the valve closed position with the rockers movable. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a bit of play there. Oop. And a little bit of play there. So what I'm gonna do now is slide my fuel gauges in here. So the uh, 0.3 of a millimeter on the inlet, 0.4 of a millimeter on the exhaust and we'll see how we go. So let's go over and grab my field gauge. So I've got it open now to my inlet field gauge, which is 0.3 of a millimeter or 0 0.305 millimeter or 0 0.012 of an inch. So that's our inlet. So let's find a way in this jigsaw puzzle to get the field gauge in there. It's not too bad really. And I just want to be able to slide that between there. This is more about my awkward hand position than anything. 
Now that actually feels a little tight. So that means the, the valve is recessing into the seat material just a little. So the valve's sitting up a little higher than it should. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back that nut off, use the adjustment flathead tip on this adjuster there, back that off at Fraco, and then re-tighten it while I'm holding that still. What happens though is when you tighten this nut, it actually puts more clamping force on there. So you'll get into a bit of a routine when you're doing it of um, getting it to the right grip, which is just a really, really light mechanical, mechanical touching of the feeler gauge. Not a strong grip and it shouldn't be sliding around all willy nilly. So when you've got that slight grip on it, that's perfect. So then I just back this off just a fraction while I tighten the nut because the nut as it gets tighter, we'll put more clamping force on and then just recheck it. And you should be able to slide that around with just feeling some resistance. So I'll just set up this camera so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my spanner on that nut, just to loosen that off. So you can see there, lift loosen that nut off. And you can see that adjustment threaded section there moving around as well, that's fine. So I'll just use my screwdriver, back it off a little. Now I should be able to move that feeler gauge. Oop, sorry about the finger. I should be able to move that feeler gauge quite easily. Yep, it's probably too easy. Can't feel any resistance on it. So I can tighten that up a little. Now that's gonna grab. I've just screwed it so it's got some friction. And now, oh, it's actually not too bad. A little bit of a grab there, but that's not too bad. Now, because I know my nut is going to cause more compression when I tighten, I'll just back that off a little, and now I'm gonna tighten that with my spanner, tighten the nut with my spanner, and then I'll recheck how much grip I've got on there. So we'll just go back to that. So now I've just got the slightest little bit of drag on there. That feels quite good. So that's that one set. So now I'll go through and find the exhaust manifold feeler gauge, which is the 0.016 or 0.4 of a millimeter, and basically do exactly the same thing on the exhaust rocker. Right, so that was with cylinder six rocking. We work on cylinder number one. And make sure they're nice and tight and you're, you've rechecked your clearances, then you can move on. So the next one is with the valves rocking on number two cylinder. Set the clearances on number five. So we would just go back to the front of the crank with our socket rotate the crank clockwise obviously this is the second cylinder so we'd get that with the exhaust valve reaching the uh, closed position with the inlet just starting to go down and stop and then we can work on cylinder five and so on and so on cool for cats